Welcome to Yahoo Finance Presents. I'm Rick Newman. Today we're talking with Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, Democrat of New York. Senator, thanks for joining us. Uh, my pleasure. Need to start by asking you about uh, coronavirus stimulus. We've been talking about this for months, uh, and we know from our audience this is something a lot of people really care about. So just to put the politics aside for a moment, can you tell everybody whether we should expect anything by the end of the year or whether this is basically toast until uh, the Biden administration? Well, I certainly hope we can get back to the negotiating table. I've heard from a lot of New Yorkers and they are truly struggling. People don't have enough food. They don't have any sense that they'll be able to provide for their families in the new year. Unemployment insurance runs out at the end of the year and they're concerned about whether anything will change. And so we really need relief going to our state. We need money for state and local governments, for health care workers, for food stamps, for rental relief, for unemployment insurance, for small businesses, for our restaurants, for all the industries that have been crippled because of COVID. And we need it now. Unfortunately, we've not found that common ground yet. Um, I'm hoping that Mitch McConnell hears from his constituents over the holidays. And so maybe that will be reason to get everyone back to the negotiating table. So we have these two runoff uh, Senate races in Georgia on January 5th. Those will determine uh, the makeup of the Senate, which party controls it. Is it do we have to wait to get past those before uh, Congress can do anything about another stimulus bill? Well, no. I mean, we could start negotiating a stimulus bill right now. Um, Speaker Pelosi has already passed two bills in the House on a bipartisan basis. Uh, she's lowered her number from three trillion to two trillion. Uh, Mnuchin got very close to that at one point eight, I think. But Mitch McConnell is stuck at about five hundred billion dollars. And so he's nowhere close to where the other two negotiators are. So I hope that perhaps uh, after Thanksgiving in a couple of weeks in December, that we could work on a common sense bipartisan covid relief package that meets the needs of the families of my state and across the country. So if Republicans would happen to win those two races and retain a thin margin in the Senate, uh, Mitch McConnell would would have a lot of leverage in that uh, scenario. Would Democrats just have to accept something like five hundred billion dollars, a lower number, which is around one fourth of what uh, Nancy Pelosi in the House wants? I think if we just caved in to Mitch's demands, uh, it would really harm the country. So one of the poison pills in Mitch's bill right now is blanket liability protection. And we remember what that looked like when meatpacking plants would be opened where no one would have personal protective equipment, no masks, would be working shoulder to shoulder, and COVID ran through those meatpacking facilities like wildfire. So we don't want to see that again. And without any ability to hold an employer who doesn't take the lives of his workers uh, seriously and care, then you're putting a lot of workers in a lot of Americans across the country at grave risk. So I think those kinds of poison pills are really harmful and we don't like to be bullied into bad policy. Um, I think the Democrats in the Senate would negotiate, would lower their total number, but not at the price of harming employees. President Trump obviously has not acknowledged Joe Biden's victory in the Electoral College and the fact that Joe Biden is going to be president in 2021. Uh, and he's still trying to invalidate the election results. It's not partisan to say this is a shameful effort to undermine voters. And almost no Republicans have come out and acknowledged Biden won. Uh, I'm very interested whether Republicans say to you privately, look, we know Biden won. We just need to, for Trump to get over it. Uh, does, you know, do Republicans basically get what's going on here? Are they sort of in league with Trump in an effort to overturn the results of the presidential election? I think most Republicans who have not acknowledged the election are afraid of Trump and are unwilling to stand up to him and don't want the consequences of a backlash that he might create for them. The ones who have stood up, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, Mitt Romney, uh, Ben Sass, they've stood up to President Trump in the past on different issues. So frankly, you just need leadership. You need independent leadership to stand up to him and to tell the truth. Uh, so it's disappointing that my colleagues, uh, that more of my colleagues haven't been willing to do that, but they haven't been willing to do it in the last four years because they are afraid of losing the support of Trump supporters or just afraid of the backlash. And frankly, you need much more leadership than that here in Washington. Do Republicans on Capitol Hill acknowledge that privately or do they just basically bury their heads in the sand? 
They do not acknowledge it. Uh, let me ask you about the agenda for a Joe Biden administration, what Congress might be able to get done. Uh, Biden has a lot of items on his agenda. I can't go through, uh, you know, like the top 10 and just ask you one at a time. But what do you think are priorities for the next Congress? And I'm talking about things that might actually be doable. It, it would either be done with a very thin Democratic majority in the uh, Senate or a very thin Republican majority. So it would have to be something where at least a few members of the other party would agree with the majority of one party. What what could get done? So I think there's a lot of things that are deeply bipartisan. I do think COVID relief and rebuilding the economy is the most bipartisan idea there is and something that everyone shares a desire to do. I think we could begin to rebuild our infrastructure, begin to create more robust job training through our community colleges and our state schools. I'd like to have a national paid leave plan, something that is already bipartisan in the House and I believe can be bipartisan in the Senate. Personally, I'd like to work um, through my committees. I'm on the Armed Services Committee and we've been doing a lot for our service members. We have legislation on burn pits, for example, that men and women who participated in the war on terror were subjected to the horrible toxins that came out of burn pits in dozens of countries around the world. Um, those service members, now veterans, are dying of horrible cancers because of the toxins released from those burn pits. We could pass legislation on that. So there's a lot of really easy bipartisan work that's already ready to go that we could work on together in, in a Biden administration. What about measures on climate change and global warming uh, there? Uh, and it would not be the Green New Deal. That is not likely to get through the Senate. But there are other uh, less extreme measures that um, some Republicans and some Democrats support. Anything that could happen there? Yes, there is. Um, so if you break down all the ideas within the Green New Deal, most of them are already bipartisan. For example, investing in science, technology, engineering and math, investing in renewable energies and energy efficient energy efficient buildings and appliances. Um, we could also invest in, in redeveloping and cleaning up brownfields. Uh, every state in this country has legacy pollution that, if cleaned up, could create opportunity for development and growth and new businesses and new hotels and new industries. So those are the kinds of things that we could fund today. And I do believe if we fund a large infrastructure investment nationwide, it can be green energy investment. So it can be rebuilding our infrastructure to be energy efficient, to use mass transit, to use new technologies. That would be the smart way to rebuild. And I think a lot of states would be really interested in that. So those are the kinds of ideas that are already bipartisan that are part of this vision for how to tackle global climate change. So, if, if, so, so if Republicans retain control of the Senate, uh, some Republicans might vote for bills like that. But we saw during the uh, later years in the Obama administration, Mitch McConnell really just tried to prevent almost anything from happening that Obama might be able to claim as an accomplishment. Do you expect the same sort of obstructionism if uh, he remains Senate Majority Leader, just trying to prevent stuff from happening, prevent cabinet appointees from taking their jobs and things like that? Or do you think he would be more cooperative? I don't know. I mean, the difference is perhaps that Mitch McConnell knew uh, President-elect Biden when he was a senator. So there may be some commonality there. There may be some willingness to work together. Um, so I do believe there's a, there's a possibility that Mitch McConnell treats a President Biden different than a President Obama. But I don't know. Um, he was really quite destructive during the Obama administration, being unwilling to find common ground and do good things for the country. Uh, he'll have a smaller majority. Maybe that, again, will make it easier to get more bipartisan things on the table. But I haven't given up on Georgia. I think we have a real shot of winning Georgia. We've got two great candidates in John Ossoff and Raphael, Rev Reverend Raphael Warnock. So I'm very hopeful that we can get every vote out and really organize ourselves in, in Georgia to win that the, those special elections or those runoffs um, in January. The 2020 elections are still underway going into 2021. Uh, Democrats did underperform, at least according to polls, uh, which we now know are somewhat faulty. Um, do you feel like you understand why Democrats did not take back the Senate and lost seats in the House instead of gaining seats? Um, not particularly. I think that um, we had great candidates across the country and they really ran on issues that people do care about. But perhaps some of those states were redder than people thought. Some of those districts were not yet ready to turn blue. 
but it doesn't mean the work that we did didn't matter because it did. And we organized more people, got more people involved. And maybe those candidates or candidates who care about the same issues can win the next cycle. So I'm I'm still optimistic that the people who did run did a great job because they moved people's opinions and minds about the vision and agenda that Democrats have. And it's one of the reasons why Vice President Biden is now President-elect Biden. And these are some of the issues a lot of people are already thinking about with regard to the next set of elections two short years away from now. And we hope we can talk to you many times before then. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much.